What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on Profile Builder by talking about sub-assembly spans inside of the program. This is where you can start creating those really complex assemblies inside of the program itself. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so if you do want to check out Profile Builder, I'll link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you purchase through the link, then I receive a commission. Now remember that. Up to this point, we've talked about how to create assemblies that repeat an object along spacing and how they repeat a profile member along a distance. And then we also talked about spans and how we can set this so objects like our profile member here can be used and trimmed like this. So say I was to take this bump this up to four inches and click on auto trim. Notice how if I use a span for my profile member, this is going to add the support in between these supports, right? So if I do this, this is creating a fairly solid fence. But what happens if within this assembly itself, you want this to have kind of like end supports, but then smaller objects like this one repeating within the space inside of the supports. Well, to do that, you're going to have to use what's known as a sub assembly span. And so a sub assembly span is basically an assembly inside of an assembly. And so let's go ahead and let's set up a basic profile or a basic assembly and I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing is we're going to start a new assembly and we're just going to add this as our support. Right, So we're going to click in here. This is a component that I've already added to my model, and I'm going to pick it from my model. Right, We're going to say there's going to be one of those every eight feet. So if I draw in here like this, you can see how that fence post is going to repeat every eight feet. Now we can go ahead and do what we did before, where we want the span to have a profile member in here, and that's going to be our bar. And so remember that the way that works, just real simple, and I'll just show you how to do it completely. Um, I'll draw a one inch by one inch object right here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a profile member, and I'm going to use it, do it using the profile creation dialog. I'm just going to select this face, click on the plus button, and we're going to add a support profile member, and we're going to set our insertion point to the bottom middle. And what I usually like to do is I like to go ahead and add just a little bit of this profile in here so that I can reference it kind of like I have here. But then what we're going to do is we're going to, within this assembly right here, we're going to add a span. And so in this case, the span is going to be that profile member, and I'm just going to pick it from my model right here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to bump it up by four inches like this. So if I set this to auto update just by double clicking on this button right here, now we can kind of see what it's doing. I'm also going to copy this and I'm going to set an up down offset of 24 inches right here. So now we have the horizontal support in here. Now the problem with this at the moment is we can't really add a repeating object in between these posts, right? Because if I use what we talked about last week and I add a component in here. Notice what this is going to do if I pick a component like this one is it's just going to stretch it or scale it in here. But if I uncheck that, it's just going to kind of like drop it in here, but it's not going to repeat it, which is not what we want. Well, because we want this to be a repeating assembly, what I need to do is I need to use what's known as a sub assembly span. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new assembly. So we're just going to click on the plus button right here. We're not going to save this assembly yet because we can just sample it later to get back to it. But what I'm going to do in this situation is with this new assembly, I'm just going to create an assembly that's basically a repeating component. So I'm going to add our smaller picket in here like this. And we're going to say that picket's going to show up every six inches, right? And I can just drop this in here like this. This is just so I can sample it later. Well, now this is a separate assembly, but within this assembly, we can reference this as a sub assembly. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting the assembly attributes over here. So I'm basically selecting this assembly. And then I want to go over into spans and I want to add a new span. And this time I'm going to use a sub assembly. 
So if I use a sub assembly, I can now go in and pick that repeating posts assembly that I just selected. And so notice what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna come in here and that's going to use this assembly directly inside of this object right here. Now, one thing that we wanna fix, and this actually looks really good, which is nice, um, but one thing we wanna fix is notice how this is actually creating a copy of this object right in the middle of this whole thing. All I wanna to do to fix that so that it's not doing that is I just wanna set an offset of, we're gonna say, I think it's going to be five and 11 sixteenths of an inch. And so we're gonna set not an offset, but a setback. So in this case, I'm gonna say five and 11 sixteenths on my setback. Notice all that does is that takes that object and it just creates a setback at the start right here like this so that that object is no longer um, being created inside of this object right here. And we want to do the same thing on the end. So on the end, we want to create a setback and that setback is going to be same thing. In this case, it's going to be 5 and 11 sixteenths right here. Well, notice how now that's no longer placing that inside of this object, which is great. So now what I have is I have a fence that is going to repeat that assembly inside of my supports like this. So it does a really good job of creating this more complex fence in here. Now, one thing that we can do is we can get even more complex with this. So say, for example, that we wanted this to actually have some kind of an object on the inside. And so in this case, it's probably easiest for me to just model over top of the existing assembly that I have in here like this, but say I wanted to add a circle like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this face, I'm gonna offset it in and we'll go ahead and we'll push pull it like this. But now I'm going to select this whole thing. I'm going to make it a component. And we're going to go ahead and we'll set the component axes to maybe like the middle of the object right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to this assembly. But we're going to do it using the span function. So I'm actually using a span inside of a subassembly that goes into a span. So in this situation, we're going to do a plus. We're going to add a component. We're going to pick this component from the model. Now notice how this is facing the wrong direction right now. So all we need to do is just adjust the direction of our model axes right here. And those should actually be probably right here like this. So we'll update our component axes. So the red axis is facing the other direction. Then we'll just do like a minor adjustment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna select this and I'm just gonna double click on this option right here. So it's auto applying the assembly attributes. And so in this case, notice how it's placing it based on that middle point of the object. Well, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give this a start setback of three inches. And we'll go ahead and we'll update this right here like this. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this up by maybe 36 inches or maybe a little less, maybe two foot, nine inches right here. We'll go ahead and we'll update this. And then I'm also going to duplicate that. So we're gonna click on copy span, remove this down 24 inches. We'll update this. Well, now what's gonna happen is when we update this assembly over here, right? So we're gonna select this right here. And so we want to go into our sub assembly and we're going to pick this assembly instead. We'll notice how now what this is doing is this is placing this with the rings inside of this object. Now, one issue that we might have, and I don't really like the way the rings look, but we can adjust that in the assembly, right? So we can go to this assembly right here. We're going to adjust it. We're going to bring those top rings down like this, and then we'll just re-pick that assembly over here, right there. And I think that looks 
a lot better. So you can use it to create these more complex repeating assemblies between supports just like this. All right, so now we're going to bring in a pattern. So we're just going to search for ornamental wrought iron pattern. And specifically, I want this ornamental wrought iron pattern 06. And I'm going to bring this in. So I'm just going to download this in like this. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to right click on it and we're going to explode it. And then we're going to explode it again so that we can access the individual parts and pieces in here. And so we can go ahead and pick one of these. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. I might pick the one with the uh, kind of flower patterns over here because um, that one looks kind of cool. But what we want to do is we want to add this to our fence, right? And so in this case, I want to set up an assembly that has the repeating posts, but then it alternates these objects right here. So to do that, we're going to create a new assembly and we're going to use this as a sub assembly. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to pick up our component. So just do a plus. We're going to go pick our small support right here. And we're going to say this is going to have six inches between supports. And I like to go ahead and drop a copy of this in here so that I can work with it, right? So now we've got this set up where we've got our individual supports. Well, now we need to add this object as a component in there, so or as a span. So we're going to click on the plus button under span. We're going to add a new component right here. We're going to pick this object. And so if you ever get a message that says the component's been um, scaled, what you might do is just explode it and then just remake it as a component. So we're just going to call this um, vertical support right here. And then we'll reference it. So we'll go ahead and we'll select this object right here. Now notice what it's doing is it's scaling the object to fit. And we don't necessarily want that. So we're going to uncheck the box for scale to fit. Now the problem we're running into is the axis direction on this object is going the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by standing this up and moving it a little closer over here. But basically this means the red direction is facing the wrong direction on this object, right? The red direction actually needs to be facing this way and the blue direction needs to be facing up. And I might go ahead and rotate this object so that my starting point is already on the ground right here. But now I'm going to take this and I'm going to adjust the object axes so that red faces this way. And I actually want blue to face up. So we're going to go ahead and double click and say yes. And now we've got the axes facing the proper direction. And we're just going to update this like this. So now this object is in here and it's being placed in between these other objects right here. Now, one thing I like to do is toggle into x-ray mode at the moment. And that means that I can come in here and I just tap the X key on my keyboard, but you can also just go up to display in x-ray mode. That allows me to figure out how far I need to set it back. In this case, it needs a setback of a half inch. So I'm just going to do one half inch right here. And then when I adjust this, that's going to look really good. And you can go ahead and check the box for scale to fit. When you do that, it's going to scale it in like this. And then we need to go ahead and we need to make sure that this isn't actually through the object over here. I'm betting we probably need an offset of about a half inch or a setback on the end of about a half inch as well. So we're just going to type in half inch. We'll update this, and then we just need to set where this is going to be vertically. So in this case, I would give it an up-down offset of maybe four inches right here, and we'll update this. So now we're pretty close to having what we need, but the problem is these are all facing the same direction. Well, I want an alternating pattern in here. So what that means is that means we're just going to use the pattern option, and we're going to set this so this component only shows up every other support. And then we're going to make a copy of this object. We're going to right click on it and we're going to make it unique. And we're just going to double click in here and we're just going to flip it in place using the flip tool. 
right? So now this one is facing the other direction. Well, what that means is that means that now we can add a second component span. So we're just going to pick this one in our model. And this one is going to be the second option over here, right? So now if I update this, notice how we still need to add those setbacks, remember? So half inch and half inch. We also need to provide the up down offset of four inches like we did before. But now we've got this fence in here that's repeating these back and forth just like this. And so now what I want to do is I want to reference this as a sub assembly inside of this assembly. So to do that, we're just going to click on this object and sample it so that we can edit it. And for this object, what I want to do is I want to set that sub assembly span to actually be this assembly right here. So now what this is doing is this is adding the kind of like back and forth in here just like this. And so in this case, we might want to adjust that top span so or the top profile. So we're just going to bump that top profile member up by six inches. So we'll do two foot ten right here, and then we'll update this. So that's a little bit higher, maybe two foot eleven like this. And so now you've got this assembly in here that's adding this wrought iron along the face right here. And one other thing that you might do is you might also adjust that setback spacing a little bit. So in this situation, right, instead of having this at like five and 11 sixteenths, you might change it to like three inches right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to pull this vertical support back like this. And we'll do the same thing on the other side over here. So now this is filling this in a lot better inside of your 3D space. So you can use this in order to create really complex assemblies using Profile Builder. All right, so it feels overwhelming at first, but once you figure out the way the sub assemblies work, they're actually pretty easy to use. So do you have any questions about these, the way these work? I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to Profile Builder in the notes down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.